Hey, welcome again to another edition of Digital Plantation Podcast because the internet is one big plantation when you think about it, right? All of us out here, all those, all that clicking and all that stuff you're doing, somebody getting paid off of it. Somebody getting all that info on you. It's one big plantation, trust and know. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. So glad that you guys can join us today. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, a couple of things here that kind of came across my radar here. Oh, there was a men's conference that took place this past weekend. And boy, oh boy. Uh, oh, we're going to talk about this one. This this is really strange. And the reaction to it is even stranger. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about a little bit later. We're going to talk about this whole thing, this rage watching trend that i've been noticing people on here telling you don't watch it don't watch this show don't watch this show but then they'll come back and say but i'm gonna watch it for you so you ain't gotta watch it there's a one particular show that just dropped that uh we're gonna talk about it and just the reaction to it and how it's it's all silly at the end of the day but anyway we'll be talking about that and probably some other stuff as we get time so again thank you so much for tuning in if you have not subscribed to the podcast make sure you do so okay while you're here make sure you uh, go ahead and subscribe to it we're on the speaker speaker not speaker spreaker platform okay we're on that we're on itunes we're on spotify we're on um uh, what is it um iheart radio pretty much any platform that has a podcast that all that shows off podcasts you're going to pretty much find us on it okay so we got this this one again it's called digital plantation radio that's what it's called okay and i hope you subscribe so that you can go ahead and get those notifications anytime we upload stuff on there okay all right so again thank you so much for tuning in and so anyway we're going to go ahead and get right into it but but um, wanted to re- let you guys know because I've been kind of hinting and cluing um, you guys a little bit like last week I said that you know we're gonna go ahead and drop an album we are I'm, I'm serious so you know you got this uh, uh, AI technology out here and you know we just have a little fun with it but I said you know you can really do something that's a little more meaningful you know than just having you know a little fun with it which you it, something can be meaningful and fun by the way but but, you know, I wanted to do something that can really be a benefit to people. You know, our thing is about protecting your peace and all of that stuff. And then, you know, so but I also want to do something that's, you know, something you can kind of chill and relax to play around the house, that kind of thing and all that. So anyway, I got down and just start playing around with it. And I think we've come up with some good choices here. And um, so, yeah, so this is I'm just going to play one. OK, I'm going to play one so you can get. Uh, just a taste of what's going to be on it this it's the flow overall flow this is probably going to be one of the more faster ones on the album most of the album is going to be very chill very mellow and then you're going to have some other ones that are going to be in between but this one here is called ginger drink and um, if you like a ginger drink like i do i think you'll like this one let's take a listen to this one
All right, that one is called Ginger Drink. Again, that one is going to be one of quite a few that we're going to have on there. It's going to be around 10, around in the neighborhood of 7 to 10. The album itself will probably be about 5 $6 or something like that. It's going to be very inexpensive. I mean, we ain't, listen, <laughs> I, you know, yeah, it, it would be ridiculous for me to sit up here and charge much, much more than that. But no, and I ain't going to even be pumping it up like that. But I'm just letting you know, hey, listen, this is what we got. If you would like to have it, you know, we're going to make it available for you over on Sambatree.com. All right. So we're going to let you know about that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this first story here. Now, this past weekend, there was a story that popped off that, um, man, this is something. Now, now let me pre- preface this by saying. I, if you, this is the first time you're watching me or maybe listening to me on our podcast, very quickly, I am an individual who pretty much grew up in the church and not just the church itself. I grew up in, I came up, most of my church upbringing is in assembly of God. So when it comes to being around, growing up around in white churches and all of that, I know quite a bit about that. Okay. And I've also had uh, plenty of experience in black churches too, but my upbringing was assembly of God. And it was, you know, it's, you know, it very white, you know, you got black people in there too. So some of these people, I kind of sort of know, but the vibe of the evangelical movement, I totally understand. I, I totally like am very familiar with it. Like very, 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 very familiar with it. And so, but I haven't, you know, but I'm not, you know, I've moved away from Christianity. And I know for some of you, <gasps> I don't need to listen to you now. Okay, well, let me put you in this category, whatever. <clears throat> and so, um, but then we moved into my wife and I, <clears throat> we got into the Hebrew uh, movement, Hebrew Israelite, whatever you want to call it, movement. We was in that for a bit and we got out of that. We're not in that anymore. Okay. Um, so when you're listening to me, you know, talking about, you know, topics as it pertains to the church or the Hebrew stuff, I'm not just talking based on looking at headlines. I'm talking based on experience. Okay. You know, and I'm adding that in there. So it's not, it's more than a headline for me. And this is why I felt this story was really, um, it's real. It's one for the record books. I'll I'll just put it that way. Well, anyway, this is a conference that they have every year in Missouri, <laughs> Springfield, Missouri. I am very familiar I, with Missouri. That is like the headquarters of evangelicalism. All right, it's like the headquarters of it, and um, and so every year they have this men's conference. And it's hosted by this church called um, James River Church. Okay. And the pastor of that church is John Lindell. And um, he's been doing this. I don't know how long they've been doing this again. I'm like I said, I haven't really been tracking this whole thing, but I, but I know in recent years, I'll just say that they have been, you know, they're known for just the, it's very elaborate. And they're all about the, you know, when, you know, when you're talking about evangelical men and they have the men's conferences and stuff like that, I, my, my, I go all the way back to the, um, oh, y'all remember for some of you are watching, I can't remember the name of it, the man right now, but he was the coach of Colorado state university of Colorado. And there was this huge men's movement that they had back in the day. And they had people like Wellington Boone and some of these other people that were like the, there was this huge, huge movement. Um, now I see now y'all going to make me look this up here. Uh, it was that it was a men. Uh, let me see. Men's conference. Let's see. That was in the nineties and that was coach. Colorado. All right, you know, I got to look this up. Bill McCartney. There you go. Yeah, that was Bill coach Bill McCartney. And yes, there you go. It was called promise keepers. Yes. The promise keepers conferences. I remember those. Okay. So I go back 
like that. Okay. Very familiar with that movement. Okay. So anyway, so this one, if you're familiar with promise keepers, it's very man oriented, right? It was very man oriented, but compared to this one, I would say it was mild. Okay. I'm going to show you guys, for those of you who are watching, I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay. Cause the promise keepers, it was very like, you know, what you would expect in, you know, going back 20 years ago or, or so in a typical church conference. I mean, people show up, you know, it's very kind of like, you know, and they'll have a awesome praise and worship service, dude, you know, but it was kind of still on the chill side. You know what I mean? But let me show you on the screen here. If you're watching what I'm talking about, how far men's conferences have come. All right. So let me pull this up here and let's take a watch. There is a stirring on and the listen. earth. Something is about to happen. That will make you stronger. Do what I can, man. Saying I can't, but you want to do what I can. Follow the plan, fam. Look at the hands. Never gonna lose in the end, young boy. I'll be the man that God has called me to be. God, I'll say I'll go to the very last breath that I have. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, the Stronger Men's Conference. It ain't just a men's conference. I mean, this is the Stronger Males Conference. I mean, you can't get any more male conference than that. I mean, they had, and I remember seeing videos from it like last year. They had tanks. They had people boxing. They had people, you know, you saw the video. You you saw, you see them on there on the dirt bikes and I mean, when I tell you, these people go all the way out. So it's all about building up the man. It's a safe space, if you will. They don't even like, they're so manly. They don't even use the word safe space. They use the word kingdom, you know, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, it's very male man oriented. And I am all for that. Okay. I'm very much for that. I'm all for um, creating platforms that are going to build up our men to be strong leaders in our society, in our homes, in our families, in our communities. I am 100% for that. And being men that will speak out when they see things that are wrong or an injustice and all that stuff. I am 100% for that. Okay. So I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. Now with all of that maleness that I just gave you, why did these people start off their conference with the male stripper? I, I don't, I, well, he's not. Yeah, yeah, you can He's not really a male stripper and he'll probably get offended if you say that because there are, I can show you uh, a picture. Okay. But that's not what he's, they hired him specifically to do. They hired him because he is known for being a sword swallower. Yeah, that maybe that's a little bit better, I think. Maybe not, if you think about it. Anyway, yes, so he's known for that, and he does all the tricks and stuff like that. And so they had this long, tall pole, okay, wink, wink, and he's doing the sword swallowing while he's climbing up and down the pole. When he first got on the stage, he ripped his shirt off and you know, all the sweat and all. Anyway, he gets up there and he does his thing. Now this is how they open it up. So you see all of this right here, right? And so from what I'm hearing, I was not there. Okay. I don't have any family members or anything like that, that were there. So I don't, anything but so much info I can give you on that. Um, but from what I'm hearing, there were quite a few men who were like, okay, what the heck is this? Right. And rightfully so. I, I you know, I'm glad that some men, you know, said, but from what I, un but I did not hear, nor do I recall hearing about any kind of like a walkout or anything like that. 
um, you know, not at all. It was just pretty much they saw it and they kept right on pushing. OK, so I'm setting you up for this video that I'm about to show you here. I'm looking on my phone and seeing if I have another one here because uh, I have one that was a little bit longer. Of course, I don't have it. Hold on. Let me see if I can find this. Uh, let's see if I can find a longer one here. Let's see if I can find one. If not, it's all good. OK, all right. So the one I have, I'm going to show you. That one's going to suffice for our conversation here. So anyway, so enter in. So this uh, pastor, his name is um, Mark Driscoll. OK, now I know very little about him again, because I had we were kind of on our way out of the whole church thing when his whole he it was some major stuff that was going on with uh i think the church he used to pastor i was called mars hill and it was some stuff that broke out of there i don't know okay i don't know what happened there but it was enough for them to kick him out and it was enough that people all over the christian christian spectrum were rebuking him for it okay i don't think it had anything to do with messing with little children or you know women i, I don't think it had anything it was just things he would say i think that's what it was right so anyway, many, 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 many years have passed since those days, right? So he, I guess, is on the come up now, just a little bit. And so he got invited to this conference. So the next day after the whole male stripper sword swallowing thing, he gets up on the stage. Okay, now I can play the video here. Let me pull this up here. Make that a little bit bigger in there. And what you're going to see in this video is him. It's going to be twofold. You're going to see, hear him speaking and he's commenting on what you're going to see in the smaller video, which is the guy who's the male stripper slash sword swallower. <laughs> anyway, let me pull this up here and, and, and let's take a watch. Listen and, you know, let's continue. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. Mm -mm. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you.
we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to. All right, and it and pretty much ends there. Where or oh, where or oh, where do we begin with this one? Wow. Now, again, I don't I'm not privy to this man's history. I'm talking about Mark um 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 this this Mark guy. I I am not privy Mark Driscoll. I'm not privy to anything he may have done in the past. And again, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not in the area of messing with little children or breaking up marriages, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure it's not in that arena. You know, I think it's some other stuff, which is, you know, from what I said, let's just say whatever it is, we're just going to put it in a whole big category and call it bad. Okay. Because again, I, I can't speak on what he did. All right. Now, some people right from there will say, well, okay, well, that's when you need to shut up. Well, not necessarily because in this instance, what took place, it doesn't matter what this man did. That has no bearing on what took place in this conference. Because, see, here you're dealing with a whole religious ideology that when it comes to um, manhood and how men are supposed to be and just in, and, and totally 100%, as far as I knew, we're definitely anti LGBT as far as I knew. But again, someone had to green like that, but I don't want to get too far ahead of me, ahead of myself. So what they did was, so regardless of what this man did, we are talking about what took place right there and him bringing out Mark 18, we say Matthew 18, I believe it was. It's the passage basically he's referring to. If you got, and he, he, he gave you some of it, you know, if you have a fault with your brother, go to him in private and in secret. People try to pull that mess all the time on YouTube. And they'll say, well, you know, if you got a problem with another YouTuber, you should have went to him privately because that's what the Bible said. But if this YouTuber is going to go on live and go with all these people watching, and it's going to say all kinds of stuff that's false, then, uh, yeah, I'm going to respond in kind period because that goes out the window do you understand what i'm saying because he didn't go with mark 18 or matthew 18 so why should i i'm just giving you an example so likewise here you're gonna have a whole poll a whole poll with a man that's a he's he's stripper he's a stripper do i have the video hold on hold on let me see i have an image here let me see if I can pull that up for you. Oh yeah, I got I got an image here for you. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll find it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I don't I'm just showing y'all right quick and then I'll just keep it moving, okay? All right, let's see. See if I can get this to come on, fly over there. Okay, it won't. All right, let's see. I'm going to show y'all this now. All right, okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the, this is the guy. This is the guy right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is the guy. His name is Alex Magala. And he's known for, you know, doing a whole sword swallowing act. And, you know, he does the whole, you know, climbing up on poles and all that stuff. He does that too. Yeah, that's what he does. But I'm sitting up here like trying to, I'm scratching my head like, who greenlit this thing? I'm talking about for this this whole men thing that you got going. Stronger men conference, and you're gonna have. I, if he ain't gay, he's sure pretending very well. Who's doing multiple innuendo acts, climbing the pole, right? Sw swallowing the sword, all that stuff got roots. You know what I mean? Pretty deep roots 
into some things that I thought that they were against that. But someone had to green light this whole thing. And the responsibility, as far as I'm concerned, it falls under this guy, John Lindell. He's the one that, this, this is your conference. You can't blame anybody. And I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen because he was saying, I'm sure he's going to try to address it and all this other stuff, right? But I guarantee you, I, it, I'm almost certain that this dude is going to be throwing some assistance under the bus over this. Because I'm telling you right now, there is no way, no way, absolutely no way that these guys did not, nobody knew what this guy was about. It took me all but like three seconds to find out this guy is a, is a gay stripper. It took me about three seconds. You tell it took me three seconds. I would, you know, some of these people out here, these pu public people out here that got all these big whatever platforms and stuff. I said, call me. I I'll help you out. And it would be at a fraction of the price that I'm sure whoever you're paying. It took me three seconds to find it. It didn't pass through your mind that maybe we, perhaps that's not the move for what we're trying to portray here. Maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Maybe that don't that don't really fit that. Or the bigger question would be, why are you doing that? How about that? What's inside of you is is saying to you saying to you that that's okay, that you okay with that? Now, if you are something you know, are individuals that get down like that, then that's something different. That's something totally different. If, if that's how you get down and, you know, you that's your entertainment or whatever, then that's you. But for what you guys are putting out here and have been putting out, this is totally 100%. It, it disqualifies anything, anything that this group or evangelicals in general would have to say when it comes to LGBT, you are 100%. 100% disqualified from having anything to say on this topic, anything. When it comes to LGBT, particularly gay men, you you are 100% disqualified because you you guys were willing enough to hire an individual <laughs> to to be to strip in front of some men. And do all these and do these sexual acts. You okay with that? You are one hundred percent okay with that. I'm taking my time with this because I want people need to understand this. Y'all were okay with this, but see, here's the thing too. So I said, okay, well, let me see. Now, a good percentage of the reactions that I'm seeing, fortunately, are people who are saying. You know, they're saying, hey, listen, what Mark did, Mark Driscoll did, he was absolutely correct. I mean, there's even people who really don't like this dude, but they're saying, you know what? What he said, what he did, that was correct. And so you have preachers and people like this individual here, Justin Peters. This is what he was posting. I mean, he's not the only one. There's a lot a lot of people out here that shared his view. He said, Mark Driscoll should neither be praised or defended. He is manifestingly um, unqualified um, and disqualified from being in ministry. The little stunt he pulled for which he is garnishing praise, uh, a garnering praise was just that. It was a stunt. It was a self and how you say aggrandizing, aggrandizing, I don't know, grand, I don't know, showboating stunt that was done at a heretical wackadoodle church. Lord willing, I'll have a video explaining all of this posted later today. But there's a lot of people that whatever this dude did, they really hate him. I mean, they really hate him. But in their hate, it overrides what was done at this conference. It's kind of like this. And this is what I was I was talking. I was sharing this on on social media somewhere. I said, it's kind of like this. It's almost as if, OK, 
let's say you're outside, you're walking and you're at the park and you notice this little girl trying to cross the street and he knows this truck coming at this little girl. Then, you know, you too far away. But then this guy comes out of nowhere, pushes the little girl out of the way. The girl is safe. The guy he's safe too. But then you find out later on that, okay, this guy that pushed her out, he just finished robbing a bank or he just finished committing crime. He has a whole criminal history. What the heck does that got to do with the action? Do you understand what I'm saying? And see, this is a problem that I find that a lot of people have when it comes to this. It's like you, you lack the ability to itemize things, to look at the nuances of things. In other words, just because I may acknowledge a good that someone did, it doesn't mean I co-sign on their entire life. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can say, hey, listen, what this dude did, what this man did or whatever, right on. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean I'm going to sit up here and tell people, okay, now y'all got to go and look up Mark, Mark Driscoll and go to his church and buy his um, his uh, um, um, his tapes or they don't do tapes anymore, his CDs and buy, make sure you subscribe to his channel. And all. I'm not telling y'all any of that. I'm just saying what this man was saying and what he did, I think was right. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of other people that are seeing it that way too. But there's also plenty of other people, a lot of these preachers that didn't like what he was saying because they got some beef that happened some time ago, you know, and they still won't hold. And isn't it funny how you have Christians that will tell you about, you know, um, God, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's t toss everything you did in the sea of forgetfulness. But the very people that will tell you that got fishing boats and they'll be the main one that will go out fishing for stuff that you did in the past. You, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Again, I don't know anything about this Mark dude. I, I remember hearing his name back in the day, but we were actually on our way out of the whole church thing, you know, um, at that time. So, you know, I, I, but I, but the things I do recall, it wasn't, it was, there was some crazy stuff, but it wasn't like, you know, someone died or something like it wasn't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, but that should not have any weight at all with this. Even I would go as far as saying this, even if he did, because what this, uh, what, um, um, what's his name? John Lindell, the guy that's hosting the conference, what he said was, if you, if you remember, he said, I was talking with him for like Mark Driscoll for like a half an hour. He didn't even bring this up at all with me. Then all of a sudden he want to get on stage and all of a sudden say this. Okay, that may be problematic. Okay, you know, why would you not say anything prior? Okay, okay, I'll give you that one. But how does that still overshadow the fact, Mr. Lindell, that you greenlit a gay male stripper at a Christian male conference? How does that even overshadow that? You need to sit down. You need to be thoroughly questioned. And some people, quite honestly, if your standards are so high like that, some people need to walk and it's probably needs to start with you because how are you going? And, but see, and, but he, here's the even deeper thing, because see, it's easy to point out the leaders, the main characters in this thing. But I would say the, the, the main characters in this thing are the amount of men who stayed there and kept it moved because I guess they felt like, Hey, listen, we traveled all the way here. We might as well just stay here. So I can kind of get that. But when this guy was stripping and when he was doing this thing, did you just sit back and just say, Hmm, this is strange. Or did you get up there and say, Oh, hell no, we ain't doing this. No, 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 no. Let me go down here and let me talk to these pastors or whoever green lit this thing. Did you do that? Because for every man that just sat up there and took that in all of this, candy stuff that you candy crush stuff you guys are doing with the trucks and the you know you got people dressed up like superheroes and all this other stuff all oh, that's a bunch of crap all oh, that's a bunch of crap because if you can't even demonstrate manhood and taking a stand in a conference called stronger man or whatever the heck is called if you can't even take a stand there then what use are you out in the real world you won't even say nothing there Y'all literally sat up there and watched a whole man half naked doing a whole what he does and didn't say anything. You just stayed there. 
And again, the logic may be, well, you know, I, I came on. We traveled all the way here. Where else am I going to go? You can leave. How about that? Leave and let them know why you're leaving and demand your money back. That's what men do. And sadly, unfortunately, this is a good. That's why I went to talk about this, because this gives a this a lot of things you can talk about on this thing. It also it just show you where things are right now, particularly in the church. See, and particularly our men, the church is not this certifies that the church is not a place for men to become men. It is not. It's not. I'm just going to tell you, let me say it again. The church is not a place for men to become men. It is not. And when I say that, that is not based simply on this one thing. I am going back. How old am I? Probably about 30 years worth of receipts that I have from a personal level to things I've seen and witnessed on a national level. I have seen over and over again how men, real men, when anytime they want to stand up and say, nah, this doesn't go down here. I've seen how churches punk down real men and they do this all the time, all the time. And so them doing this kind of stuff here, it just it just flows flowing right along with 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 everything else and what they do and what they're about. You know, this was just something, you know, just it's just a matter of time, you know, for it to come out in the open. It's it's really something. It's really something. And I think we'll be talking more about this um, in a um, in the future, because, you know, especially when you're talking about men or men's ministry, that's something very close to me. And um, and yeah, it, there's a lot in it, but we'll be talking more about that one. And um, anyway, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to get into the second part. And this is a story that we came across here. Uh, we're going to be talking about this. This whole rage watching trend that I noticed. You're listening to Digital Plantation Podcast. I'll see you after the break. Hey, well, you just caught just a little bit of the podcast today. If you want to watch the whole pod- podcast, just go to the description below. Click on the link and it'll take you to the uh, podcast where you can hear the whole thing. Remember, if you haven't subscribed by now, what are you waiting on? Go ahead and subscribe to it. Digital Plantation Podcast. I'll see you over there. I'm waiting on you. <laughs> 